we are all often uncomfortable when stared at. However, imagining being grabbed, groped, exploited, enslaved, and destroyed inhumanely. Well, about 200 years ago, this became Sarah Bartman's reality. The most humiliating and upsetting experience anyone should have to endure. Being a slave in a foreign land, Sarah was left with no choice but to cooperate. She was among the first human sexual trafficking victims. Throughout her teenage until the time of her death at 26 years old, Sarah experienced the brunt of it all. She was exhibited for her steatopigic body type, an uncommon occurrence in Western Europe. In medical terms, steatopigia is a condition that manifests in the accumulation of large fat amounts on the hips and buttocks, therefore producing a curvy figure. This is a normal condition among people in the arid parts of South Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa. It can be argued that she never felt different from her people. Little did she know that her reality would change when she was sold into slavery. It was only after moving abroad that it may have dawned on her that life would never be the same again. Cynically named the Hottentot Venus, she was paraded, exposed inhumanely, molested, and publicly examined as a freak attraction in many audiences, derogatively described as both a woman and an ape, always as a character but never as a human being, inferior but ironically, erotically desirable, exploited while alive and in death. The name Hottentot was considered very insulting as it was a name given to the bushmen and women of the Khoi Khoi tribe by the Dutch colonialists as a reference to the sound of their native language. Her experiences in captivity illuminate the journey of a black woman whose physique was subject to abuse, shame, and trauma while simultaneously glorified. The dehumanizing story of Sarah Bartman puts into perspective the rhetorical fascination European imperialists had towards enslaved women. Narratives that began as a curiosity later became subjects of negative fascination and erotic projection towards Sarah's body. Unfortunately, this manifests in modern civilizations through fixed stereotypes that control and limit how a black woman exists in society. The racial fetishization of a black woman's body stems from the enslavement period. It was a patriarchal narrative used to depict a black woman's body as an object awaiting the conquest of men. These imperialistic narratives encourage the abuse and sexual exploitation of black women throughout slavery. These imperialist agendas are extended through hypersexualization and historical reproductive control during this colonial period. Sarah Bartman's story is a perfect example of the dehumanizing effects of colonialism and racism. Sarah was objectified and subjected to public humiliation at a very young age. Her physical appearance sparked scientific scrutiny and curiosity, especially in Westerners, who would often be the majority audience. In today's video, we illuminate the untold stories of Sarah Bartman's experience in the hands of her captors and mirror its manifestations in our modern society as a continuation of an imperialist agenda of racial subjugation. At a very young age, before slavery, Sarah Bartman had already endured so much pain and loss. She was born in 1789 to a pastoralist family of the Khoi Khoi tribe in Eastern Cape, South Africa, then known as the Gamtus River. Her parents died while she was still young. Most of her childhood was spent on Dutch colonialist farms. Early into her teenage years, Sarah got married and gave birth to a child who unfortunately died not long after birth. Shortly after, at 21, she was sold as a domestic slave to the Caesar brothers, William and Hendrik. It is believed that she moved to Cape Town with the Caesar brothers and worked for at least two years as a nursemaid and washerwoman in a few households besides the Caesars. It is also rumored that she was in a relationship with a Dutch soldier and bore two children who also died as babies. Eventually, Sarah returned to work as a wet nurse 
in the Caesar brothers' household. The brothers had a close friend, Alexander Dunlop, a Scottish surgeon. At the time, Alexander also supplied animal specimens for showcasing in Britain. The idea of Sarah's exhibition in Europe was conspired by Alexander. Though the Caesar brothers were initially reluctant to the suggestion, they would later agree, and sometime in 1810, they all left for London. She was under a two-year contract that permitted her to travel and work as a domestic helper in both Ireland and England. By this time, the slave trade had been banned in Great Britain. Notice that the slave trade had been banned, but slavery was somewhat allowed. In addition, she would be exhibited for entertainment. The contract also stipulated that Bartman was entitled to a share of the money generated from the exhibitions. As expected, and in addition to being a slave, the stipulations on the contract were false, but legally binding. She had now signed up for a life of slavery and misery. Sarah was misled into thinking she had some control and would benefit in some way from her performance. However, this was impossible because her relationship with her handlers was unbalanced. Her first exhibition on arrival was at the Egyptian Hall at Piccadilly Circus in London. Dunlop displayed Sarah's half-naked body to anyone willing to pay the one shilling admission fee, portraying her as a primitive and remarkable freak of nature. The wealthier members of society could touch her for a higher fee. Her enormous buttocks, in particular, attracted the most attention from audiences. She smoked a pipe while performing and wore clothes that were skin-tight and coloured like flesh, along with feathers and beads. Wealthy clients could hire her for private shows in the comfort of their own homes, allowing their guests to touch her. However, the display and public treatment caught the attention of anti-slavery activists who sued and charged her handlers. The case was eventually dismissed after her signed contract was produced to confirm her consent. According to Bartman's testimony, she wasn't being abused either. Given the circumstances, the unanswered question is whether she was coerced to do so by the handlers. Well, we will never know her truth. The media attention that the court case brought more demand for Bartman as an exhibition. By 1812, she had traveled as far as Limerick, Ireland, and had been on tours all over England. Sarah spent four years in Great Britain, mostly as an exhibition. In September 1814, Bartman's handlers took her to France and sold her to a ruthless animal handler named S. Rowe. In France, she was often displayed in and around Paris. She was also frequently displayed in the Palais Royal. Those willing to pay more were allowed to touch her and often sexually abused Sarah at their pleasure. Her abuse and mistreatment escalated as she was treated like an animal, led about and trained, and had her feminine organs examined as a morbid interest and sexual peculiarity. It's also believed that she became a heavy drinker and was forced into prostitution during this period. Roe displayed her in a harsh setting at the Paris Palais Royal for 15 months. She was effectively enslaved under this French handler. Her display in Paris became increasingly noticeably linked to scientific racism. French scientists wanted to know if she possessed the enlarged labia that had supposedly been seen in Coisanne in the Cape by older naturalists like François Leveillon. She was visited by French naturalists, including Georges Cuvier, the father of comparative anatomy. The interest in Bartman's body also caught the attention of various artists who made paintings of her. Bartman's promoters in Paris did not have to worry about accusations of enslavement. When she arrived in Paris, her life was incredibly disadvantaged and sad. Sarah received treatment similar to that of an animal. Evidence suggests she was occasionally portrayed wearing a collar around her neck. The French economic recession following Napoleon's defeat led to a lack of audiences that could afford to see her. Sarah was impoverished and sickly towards the end of her life. Unknown causes led to Sarah Bartman's death in Paris 
on December 29, 1815, when she was 26. However, it is speculated that she suffered an inflammatory disease, probably caused by pneumonia or syphilis. As proof that people of African descent were at the lowest level of evolution, Sarah's remains were left on display at the Museum of Man in Paris. Africans were perceived at the time by the majority of white Europeans as an inferior race, hypersexual, and a primitive race that represented the lowest phase of human evolution and the connection between animals and people. However, history has it that Sarah was bilingual and could speak her native language fluently, in addition to French, Dutch, and English, because of the various cultures she had encountered. According to French biologist Georges Cuvier, Sarah was bright and remembered faces well. Despite this, Curvier belonged to a group of scientists who worked to establish a racial hierarchy with white people at the top. He believed that Sarah's remains exhibited ape-like characteristics in line with his beliefs on racial evolution. He compared her lively nature when she was alive to that of a monkey and thought her little ears resembled an orangutan's. There was no peace even in death for Sarah. The French scientist Cuvier had kept her skeleton, genitalia, and brain. In the Museum of Man, Sarah's brain and dissected genitalia were preserved and displayed in jars as further proof of African inferiority. He had also commissioned a painting and a full-body mold of Bartman's body before dissecting it. Shortly after a formal request was made by the Museum d'Histoire Naturelle to have the rights to keep and display these remains, as they represented a unique human specimen. Bartman's skeleton and body cast were on display at the Museum d'Histoire Naturelle d'Angers after the application was approved. Her skull was stolen in 1827, but it was discovered a few months later. Her back was made the focal point of her body with her skeleton and body cast placed side by side and pointing away from the viewer. The Bartman exhibit was well liked up until many objected because they thought it was a demeaning portrayal of women. 1974, the skeleton was extracted and in 1976, the body was cast. Since the 1940s, there have been irregular calls for the return of her remains. In 1978, a poem, I've Come to Take You Home by Khoisan poet Diana Ferris, significantly supported the effort to return Bartman's bones to her homeland. However, these efforts didn't gain widespread recognition until 1980 through American paleontologist Stephen Jay Gould's book, The Mismeasure of Man. Mansell Upham, an expert in the history of colonial South Africa and a jurist, was another person who spurred the drive to return Bartman's bones to South Africa. President Nelson Mandela of South Africa formally asked for the return of Bartman's remains from France to his nation in 1994. On March 6, 2002, France granted the request after extensive legal wrangling and discussions. Her remains were returned in May 2002 and interred in her birthplace, the Gamtus River Valley, in the Eastern Cape Province. From slavery to the present, black women's bodies have been manipulated and controlled throughout American history. Although strategies and laws have changed to accommodate contemporary political correctness, black people are still seen as inherently inferior. Although a great deal of Sarah's life story has been lost over time, she is typically viewed as the personification of racism, a black woman commodification. Sarah was the first known Khoisan immigrant to Europe, her life story and the cruelty she suffered are hard to hear. Her tragic story clearly depicts sexism and racial discrimination as fundamentals of European colonialism. Her life was not that of Venus, but of humiliation and suffering as an enslaved person and zoo animal that would satisfy insane fantasies. As a subject of countless scientific and medical research, Sarah became the basis of the European perception of black female sexuality.
In contemporary American sex culture and media, the hypersexualized black woman misrepresentation has taken on a fetishistic status. Black sexual practices and female bodies are fetishized as part of the American imperialist narrative perpetuating their exploitation. Pornography, ads, popular music, and other popular media represent this ideology with the size and shape of black female genitalia being idealized. One may wonder if this is empowering or an extension of the imperialist agenda of racial exploitation. Would we possibly reclaim the story of Sarah Bartman as a source of pride and empowerment, and how? While some view the glorification of black female bodies through racial fetishization as a respectable and empowering practice, it's crucial to recognize the historical roots of this phenomenon. From the hidden truths of the stories of the likes of Sarah, we identify the oppressor's historical objectification of black women. Although it is seen as an expression of the celebration of black bodies, it is also quite complex as it promotes a culture that does not allow black women to define their sexual agency or beauty. What is your takeaway from Sarah Bartman's story? We would love to hear from you. Please leave us a comment below. Also, remember to leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you enjoy this type of content. We look forward to putting more of this type of content out. Until then, remain curious.